Probably the best way to value a stock or a real estate investment trust is by finding their intrinsic value. And as you all probably know, REITs are valued based on very different metrics to the general stock. And that is why today I will show you how to create a model that will allow you to find the intrinsic value of any REIT. And this model is called the historical price to FFO model. Now the great thing about this model that I created in Google Sheets is that it's fully automatic. So let's say I want to find the intrinsic value of MPW. I will just plug in the ticker MPW, press enter and all the metrics will show up finding the intrinsic value really quickly. So you can see that the current price of MPW is sitting at $8 and the intrinsic value would be $14.39. I can do this with any other stock, say GTY. Just plug in the ticker and all the metrics show up showing us the intrinsic value which is slightly lower than the current trading price. Now of course you will not base your purchase on only one valuation model and that is why on this channel we use a large variety of different valuation models such as the multiples valuation model or the dividend discount model to find the ultimate value of any stock we want to buy. Now if you find this interesting make sure to like the video and subscribe as in the very near future I will be creating other guides on how to create various fully automatic valuation methods such as these in Google Sheets. Or you can subscribe to my Patreon in the description and gain access to this fully automatic stock valuation sheet containing all these valuation methods including the stock screener, the Nanplur analysis, Gram's formula, discounted cash flow analysis model and much more. But now let's jump to the actual creation of the historical price to FFO model. As we can see I already have the whole outline prepared right here and the first thing that I did is that I plugged in the ticker symbol of the company we want to be evaluating, MPW in this case, into a yellow box for nice visibility. I also merged the cells beneath the ticker symbol and used the Google Finance formula to get the name of the company we want to be evaluating, Medical Properties Trust in this case. Beneath that I created a large screen portraying the name of the valuation method we'll be using, the historical price to FFO. I then merged all these cells and created a nice table where our historical price per share will go. I took the years from 2012 all the way to 2022 and to the current value. I then did the same with the historical FFO per share and the historical price to FFO. As you can see the cells beneath are completely empty and that's what we will go over in this video. I also created a small space for our average price to FFO and a space where our intrinsic value will show up after we calculate it. And above that I used again the Google Finance formula to calculate the current price of the stock we are evaluating. Now feel free to pause the video and copy this whole outline so that we can move to the next steps. Now that you have finished copying the outline we can zoom out slightly and we will move to calculating the intrinsic value of the stock. As you can see this is where our engine for the whole operation will be. Now to get the price to FFO we have to scrape data from various websites. In this case we will scrape data from stockanalysis.com and we will use this very formula to do it. I will leave this formula down in the description for you to copy. As you can see if we press enter the income statement of the company we are evaluating will show up. Now if I zoom out slightly more we can see that if I change the ticker symbol up here to MPW everything here will change. I can change it to back to O again. The income statement changes to the ticker symbol we plug in. Now let's just plug MPW back as that is what we are using to do this valuation. Now to calculate FFO we have to add net income to depreciation negative gain on sales from property and all these metrics we can find in the income statement we have right here. And to fish out these statements we'll use the filter formula. I plug in the range of the values I want to be extracted and then plug in the range of the financial metrics we want to look through to find in this case net income. I will press enter and as you can see the net income is fished out on the side right here. Now next we need to fish out the depreciation and the sales of property. We will look through the list right here and we can find depreciation down in the list right here. Depreciation and amortization. So we'll just copy this real quickly. No actually first we will copy this we'll paste it below down here, we'll press enter, and then we will copy this and we'll paste it instead of the net income right here. 
and as you can see that will fish out the depreciation and amortization and we will do the same for sales of property and in this case stockanalysis.com instead of using the name sales of property they use other expenses income so this is what we're going to use and we'll use the same process we'll copy this we'll paste it down here and instead of instead of depreciation on and amortization we'll plug in other expenses and income so we'll copy this and we'll play, paste it instead of this as you can see this fished out all the statements we need to decide right here and now if i change mpw to o and zoom out slightly we can see that that automatically fishes out all the statements we need to to calculate FFO. So now let's just zoom back in again to 90%. And as we can see, the next thing we need is the historical price per share. And to find this, we'll zoom out slightly again. To find this, we'll scrape data off of macro trends in this case. So we'll go down here and I will use this formula, import HTML to import the stock price history of MPW off of macro trends. We'll press enter. And as you can see, the average stock price shows up right here. Now what I will do is I will take these average stock prices and plug them into the corresponding years for the historical price per share. And I will cut the video so that you don't need to sit through it. So now that we have the historical price per shares plugged in for the corresponding years, I plugged in the current price per share using the Google Finance formula. Now that we have the historical price per share figured out, we can move to calculating the FFO of MPW. And to do this, we'll add net income, depreciation and amortization, and subtract other expenses and income. So we'll write FFO here. And I will use a simple formula, equal sign, net income plus depreciation, and I will add other expenses and income. And now as we can see here, even though I said we have to subtract the other expenses, the other expenses already come negative with the income statement and therefore I'll just add them. Now that we have this value FFO, we're just going to drag this long all the way to the year 2012 and we will get the FFO over the last 10 years. Now for the next step, we need to calculate the FFO per share and to do this, we'll scrape of data off of macro trends again. In this case, we'll scrape the shares outstanding over the last few years. Now we will plug in FFO per share over here just so we know what we're calculating i'll make the s capital just so it looks pretty and all and to do this we'll take the ffo and we'll divide by the shares outstanding for the corresponding year let's actually just plug in the years right here so that we are not confused 2021 and we will take these two and we will drag them along right here now to calculate the ffo per share we will put an equal sign we'll take the ffo and we'll divide by the shares outstanding to the corresponding year and we'll press enter this is a pretty big decimal so we'll just make the decimal smaller to about two decimal places and we can see that the ffo per share for 2022 is 1.56 now you cannot drag this along because it would take the vertical values and it would not give you any values back and therefore you have to do all this manually so i will just do this real quickly and i will be back in a second now that we have the ffo per share calculated for every year we'll jump back to our valuation sheet and again we will have to plug each of the values in manually for all the years so i will do that and i will be back after i plugged in the historical ffo per share for the past 10 years i calculated the current ffo per share and i did this by taking the ffo from 2022 and dividing it by the shares outstanding and to find them i used the google finance formula now we can move to our final step of finding the historical price to FFO and this is fairly simple. We'll just take the historical price per share and we will divide that by the historical FFO per share to get the price to FFO. We'll take this value and we'll drag it all the way up to the current value. Sorry that didn't work. Okay, we'll just drag it over here to 2022 and we'll do this separately. Just take an equal sign and divide this by this to get the current price to FFO. Now the next step is to take the average price to FFO and to do this we'll use the average formula and we'll average out all the historical prices to FFO. 
not including the current one. We can see that the average price to FFO is 9.55. Now to find the intrinsic value, we'll just take the average price to FFO and divide that by the current price to FFO. We'll put this into brackets and we'll multiply that by the current price. And this will give us an intrinsic value of $14.91. Now I will just quickly try to visualize the process of finding the intrinsic value. So if we take the average price to FFO and divide it by the current price to FFO, we get the value which indicates the difference between the average price to FFO and the current price to FFO. We then take this value and multiply by the current price to get an intrinsic value. Now if the current price to FFO is bigger than the average price to FFO, the intrinsic value would show up to be less than the current trading price. Now as I promised at the beginning of the video, this process is fully automated. So now let's say we want to evaluate Reality Income Corp. So we'll plug in the ticker O. We will wait for the values to show up. As we can see, the intrinsic value pops right out to be $61.43, about $1 lower than the current trading price. Now, one more thing we want to do is to add the graph portraying the historical price to FFO over time. So we'll grab this row, we'll press Ctrl and grab this row, we will press Insert and we will press Chart. This will give us a nice graph. We'll just close this window right here. And we'll make this chart to fit nicely, just so everything is nice and tidy. We can also change the color of this chart, so we will double click, we'll press chart style and background color. I want this chart to be nice green. That's the whole model finished. Let me know which model you would like me to make a guide on next.